Yo man, what's going on yo? It's your boy Demon I'm back with another video. And in today's video we're talking more about the Raptors and why they're basically fooling the NBA and why the NBA is not noticing it. As for people I'm gonna talk about Masai Jerry in particular, but honestly Masai Jerry just fooling the NBA by a storm and here's why. If you are new to the channel, make sure to like button, comment, and subscribe because I don't really have anything to say. And I'll get right into this video. Masai Jerry is having a master plan. I don't know what that master plan is. Whether it's to get Shea Gilles Alexander, whether it's to get Kevin Durant, I don't know who it's to get. But this guy Masai is just doing everything under under all circumstances. Because this guy, honestly, how he built his roster from head to toe and having players and outshiners like Bad Bam Lee, Gary Trent Jr., OJ Noe, Pascal Siakam, and Scotty Barnes. The five, basically, the, basically the best starting five almost in the NBA. This guy Masai has done it all. Basically, where he got Bad Bam Lee from, he got him from an undrafted. Source, and this is from a long time ago, as he's been in the team for a bit. Gary Trent, he got an Norman Powell trade for basically completely nothing. Um, OG, he got from the draft in trading for Beavis Vasquez, where he got him and Norman Powell. He basically got Pascal, basically drafted him in the 2016 and 2013 draft class, and he basically was a, was a promising prospect for his class. And then you got Scotty Barnes with the fourth pick in last year's or the year before his draft. So, Masai Jury is having a master plan that no one has seen before. And then you have players off the bench, even you can say two in Malachi Flynn, who you got in the draft in the first round. Then you got the Lionel Banton, who you drafted in the same draft as Scotty Barnes. Uh, Edmonton was gone. Um. And then you got Christian Cook, who you drafted last year, who's a gemstone, who can almost be an all NBA rookie player. This guy couldn't look with very good off his feet and he had a great promise for the Raptors roster. But you got Otto Porter from the sign this offseason, so that's a pretty good ad. And then you added players like Josh Jackson, DJ Wilson, Justin Champagne. Your roster goes from head to toe. And no one has seen this before. But honestly, how the Raptors roster is constructed is basically a bunch of 6'9 guys and forwards that can basically do everything. They switch everything. They can pass. They can dribble. They can shoot a bit. And they basically get to the rim and score under any circumstance. But yeah, Masai Jerry knows what he's doing. Um, I think Masai Jerry is not scared to pull a trigger. Like, for example, he pulled a trigger on Demar Rosen when he traded for a superstar in Kawhi Leonard. And you also have the time when he traded for Kyle Lowry when he didn't want him to leave for nothing and getting players like Pesha Chua. Who Pesha Chua just been off the season. This guy just basically taking off. And like I said, Masai Jure knows in his promise that he wanted him from time. And he basically got him in Pesha Chua because Pesha Chua is a basically hidden gem. He basically went from shooting zero three points in the Miami Heat to basically shooting 30% now with the Raptors as for last season. And basically last season. And basically last night, Pesha Chua just lit, lit a freaking firecracker in Edmonton because this guy is basically shooting threes, just getting to the basket and doing everything you ask him to do in a very efficient manner, he's very confident in the ball and getting to him with efficiency. And then Gary Trent Jr., I know this guy is going to let a spark off this season because this guy basically, he averages almost 20 points per game and can get you about 20 points per night within some nights. And then you have Scotty Barnes who basically got you 15 points a night. And then you have Pascal Siakam who basically got you 20 points a night with Seth Van Vliet. And Pepe Van Vliet last season got you 20 points a night and he's an all-star last season. Pascal Siakam is going to take off. He wants to be a top 5 player. I think he can pretty much get there and besides that in him and... Anybody in the off and office see that in him, but Masai basically has a master plan. I don't know what it is. Honestly, their plan basically to construct their roster around basically six foot eight to six foot nine guys who can play position with basketball and can basically play at any position one through five. Whether it's center, power forward, small forward, shooting guard, any position you ask. Basically, Masai Jury is basically building a team with a 2K roster. Because honestly, how they're gonna play now, many point guards are average size is six foot three to six foot four. And he basically can run Scotty or Fed at point guard, though Fred's a bit. Though Fred is six foot one, and he basically speed up your team's offense. And he can run it any time and give a night, but I think honestly he's a bit of a weakness on our team because he's six foot one. But you have guys like I said, like Pascal, like OG, like Scotty, like Delano Banton, like Otto Porter, you have Sadis Young, you have Chris Boucher. You have many guys that can switch one through five, and basically it'll be a problem for all team defensive because they're going to guard basically the likes of for example, the Pascal Siakam and Christian Coloco pick and roll duo. That duo is nasty. If you saw that duo last night, oh my god. Christian Coloco is just another hidden gem in the skies. And I'll talk about this for my next video on why Christian Coloco can be an all rookie type player. Because this guy, Christian Coloco, is very fast on his feet. He's very mobile. He's very agile. And he's very particular 
Adam Cooking Flocko is very particular in where he has to stand and move on the court. Because Cooking Flocko is 10 foot. He's very skinny from when I first see him play. But he basically had a good footwork. Um, he played soccer back in Africa. So he had a pretty good footwork and feel for a game. But I like Christian. He basically he moves a lot. He's basically active on defense. And he can basically play on the stronger off the hedge, off a screen. Whether it's a three point shot or something else. But I think in guard guard play relatively well off the screen. But Christian Flocko is a pretty promising player. And um, Masai Jerry basically had his promise in just getting guys he likes and just having players like six foot nine who are long, who can play defense from left to right, and can basically play the way he wants to play. How the NBA basically wants to be played now, it basically has to have a long team. You have to have players over six foot four, and basically everyone willing to play defense, and basically just play five ball basketball and just play and share the ball with the team and just play relatively good defense. So. I think the Raptors have that, though their offense is a bit lackluster, but I think they pick it up. I mean, Sai Jerry, he knows what he's doing, as though the Raptors lost and lost Kawhi Leonard, they're basically just coming right where they left off. As Messiah Jerry wants to win, but he's not going to wait for a bad trade at the right time. As, for example, you've seen for when they traded DeMar Rose in a pretty good trade in my sense, but like in, like in the NBA business, you have to get something to get something, and I think Messiah like Jerry, he basically did that, but... Masai Jerry knows what he's doing. Um, he's one of the best executives in the NBA. Like, for example, when he moved Rigue for all those players in Gravis Vasquez, Patrick Patterson, and many others that made it good our whole cap. And he made that Andrea Bagnani trade for basically cap for and a bit of pick. I think that's a good trade. And basically just trading Gravis Vasquez for players like Norman Powell and OG Ananobi with the Milwaukee Bucks. That basically set us up for a long haul. And that was basically a good trade in mind because honestly, he would have not gotten two bench, good bench pieces in OG and, and OG and Norman Powell. But I think honestly that was a good trade in the sky. But Milwaukee Bucks, they kind of sold in that one. But Messiah Jerry basically knows what he's doing. Messiah Jerry basically won you an NBA championship in 2019. That was one of the best summers yet. I'd love to see that again and basically see that with the next years prior. I don't know if it's that whether that's this year or whether that's next year or whether that's years to come. But I think that the rappers within Messiah Jerry's master plan to win a ring in the next five years. I'm calling it right here because Messiah Jerry, he's the NBA's mastermind of all GM. They know what he's doing. They know what it takes for a team to win. And basically what he, what he wants to do is basically build a core roster with all players, young players and old players that can just combine and match to basically just form a good team. And I basically play a night now, basically play hard and basically play defense and basically bring it on offense no matter what. But like I said, Messiah Jerry is a match player no one's ever seen before because he's building a team of long six foot nine guys with other players around the court. Like for example, I think Fed Family and Malachi Flynn, those are only players under six foot three on this roster. I think Messiah Jerry pretty much compensating a roster for them because honestly, Fed Family and Malachi Flynn, their point guards leading the way at the smallest tight, but they're pretty much fast and shifting in their feet and they can be very bumpy on defense. But Messiah Jerry, I think you know what he's doing. Messiah, I love him. He's a very good mastermind in this Raptors off front office. And like I said, Bobby Webb, he'll put the key with Bobby Webb so he can basically do anything by all means possible. And like I said, Messiah Jerry, when the right trade comes, like for example, you can if you can get a trade for Miles Turner or even Shea Gillis Alexander, I think Messiah or Jerry would pull that trigger on him and because Messiah, basically Shea Gillis Alexander, he's a Canadian homeborn kid. And uh, he always wanted to come back home to Canada and he wanted to play for the city and for the country. And uh, even with players like Miles Turner can be a center that you need for a player like Serge Ibaka when you have him on a team. He basically such a four out for you. He such a four out for you. He play defense. He move the ball. And he basically can, and Miles Turner can basically do the same thing. So if you can get Miles Turner or Shea, that's basically a dug in my book. But Messiah Jerry, I think he's waiting for the right time to make the right trade. And basically just staying young and having their core maintained within the roster they have now. So honestly, that is a video on why the Raptors are in the NBA and why Messiah Jerry basically is a hidden mastermind in the NBA on office and why the Raptors are fooling everyone in the NBA and the NBA doesn't notice it and why the NBA should take closer look for the front of Raptors and the Raptors and your boy Demi on the now. If you want more videos like this with my camera on, let me know and I'll do more videos like this so I can do these videos each and every day. I'm trying to get subs up so make sure y'all hit that like button and hit the subscribe button wherever it is, whether it's the bottom, whether it's here, say that the swipe buttons, we need a lot. Your boy Demi, I'm sorry now. Have a good night. Have a great birthday, y'all. Peace.